For almost a decade, every summer has brought considerable racial trauma for Black Americans, starting in 2013, when George Zimmerman was acquitted for killing 16-year-old Trayvon Martin. The killings of Black people have become a constant in the news cycle and on social media. At the same time, Black Lives Matter, a phrase that has inspired a new generation of activists came to life. It has become a rallying cry for a new era of the civil rights movement in the United States and abroad, calling for a redress of the way that people of the Black diaspora are policed, discriminated against, and represented across media. For us, these are not merely headlines and hot stories. They are painful reminders of centuries of racial violence and the fragility of our own safety. This video is a reminder to news and social media outlets to recognize the humanity of Black life, Black death, and Black representation. 2013, George Zimmerman is acquitted in the Trayvon Martin case. Black Lives Matter is posted on social media after his death. 2014 was a deadly summer for police brutality, with the murders of Eric Gardner killed in July, Mike Brown and John Crawford in August, and Tamir Rice killed in November. Most of these killings were captured on video and viewed on social media by the public. Protests in Ferguson erupt after Mike Brown's killing and gained national attention. 2015, Freddie Gray dies in police custody in April and Baltimore erupts in rebellion. Also in April, Walter Scott is shot in the back while running from police in Charleston, South Carolina. Two months later in June, in the same city, white supremacist Dylan Roof kills nine black parishioners during Bible study at a historic black church. The following month in July, Sandra Bland and four other black women die in police custody. The lack of mainstream media attention around their deaths inspired black feminist legal scholar Kimberly Crenshaw to start the hashtag, say her name. In November, police footage of 17-year-old Laquan McDonald's fatal shooting is released. He was shot 16 times in October 2014, but the video became public more than a year later. 2016. In January, former Oklahoma City police officer Daniel Holtzclaw is convicted on 18 of 36 charges related to the rapes and sexual assaults of 18 Black women. He committed the crimes while he was on duty. In June, the gruesome killings of Alton Sterling and Philando Castile, who died within hours of one another on opposite sides of the country, were captured on cell phone videos and shared widely on social media. In the same month, 49 people were killed at the gay nightclub Pulse in Florida. In August, NFL player Colin Kaepernick sits during the national anthem to protest fatal police brutality against Black Americans. 2017. In August, the Unite the Right rally is held at the University of Virginia, where white supremacists storm the campus with torches. And the next day, Heather Heyer is killed at a protest in the city of Charlottesville. President Trump says there were bad people on both sides. 2018, in March, police in Sacramento fatally shoot Stefan Clark seven times in his grandmother's backyard. He was 22 years old. 2019, in October, Atiana Jefferson is shot to death by police in her Fort Worth, Texas home while playing video games with her nephew. 2020, on March 13th, President Trump issues a proclamation declaring a national emergency concerning the COVID-19 outbreak. The coronavirus ravages Black communities, with Black people dying at higher rates because of health disparities and their position as essential workers. The pandemic creates a devastating economic recession, and more than 400,000 people die of COVID by the end of the year. Also on March 13th, Louisville police officers fatally shoot Breonna Taylor in her home, in her bed. Two months later, in early May, a videotape of the fatal shooting of Ahmaud Arbery by two white supremacists becomes public. Later in May, on May 25th, George Floyd is killed by a Minneapolis police officer who is videotaped with his knee on Floyd's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. Two days later, Tony McDade, 
a black transgender man is fatally shot by police in Tallahassee, Florida. All of these instances of fatal police brutality spark a racial justice movement that erupts across the nation. 2021 ushers in progress. On January 5th, Raphael Warnock is elected as the first black U.S. Senator from Georgia in a runoff election that gives the Democrats control of the Senate. On the next day, January 6th, pro-Trump insurrectionists execute a historic and violent siege of the U.S. Capitol. And two weeks later, on the same steps where that insurrection was held, former U.S. Senator Kamala Harris, who was Black and Indian, becomes the first woman inaugurated as Vice President of the United States. In 2020, we saw a great tragedy, but we also witnessed some hope. The protests and calls for the end of police brutality in 2020 have given way to new conversations on race and what it's like to live as a Black person in the United States and globally. It forced many communities to reevaluate their policing practices and racial inequity. History often repeats itself, including racial violence. If we continue to remember these moments and start to be honest about the history that has led to them, a more hopeful history will await Black people this year and the years to come.